Hey guys, it's Key here from Kegland. Just doing a really quick video on these new magnetic stirrer machines. We used to have a different type of magnetic stirrer machine where actually we had a heating function as well and it was a little bit more of a bulky machine. There's no reason to make it that big, I guess. So we made, made it more compact and also uh, you've got rid of that heating function. The old heating function actually, it was a bit unreliable. Sometimes they could burn out. And then the other problem is actually with the heating function, it was completely uncontrolled. So if you accidentally turned it on, you could just bake your yeast. It sometimes would get up as high as like 80 degrees, for instance, and cook your yeast. So yeah, it really was best to just get rid of the heating function altogether and have just a, 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 a magnetic stirring machine, which worked really well, had a powerful motor in there and also included the little magnetic uh, stir bar as well, which is a uh, Teflon coated. So uh, yeah, to use the machines, um, yeah, you first need to make up a starter. Look, I've just got water in this so you can see the uh, stir bar in there. But obviously you're gonna be using uh, wort. You don't want to have your wort fill up to the entire capacity of the vessel. So you gotta make sure there's a reasonable amount of headspace in there as well, that's the first thing. The other thing is don't make your starter too strong. So you're sort of gonna aim for a gravity of about 1035. Um, if you go too strong, it's gonna put the yeast uh, under a bit of uh, stress uh, when you're making that starter. Starters are a fantastic way of building up a, a big population of yeast, um, especially for those big batches, or if you've got like a, a questionable yeast or a liquid yeast, is, which is uh, close to use by date or maybe even after use by date which you want to revive. Um, anyway, uh, probably what you're going to do is you're going to be boiling inside your flask. So you'll probably boil inside the flask with the magnetic stir bar in there as well. So that way you're actually sanitizing, you heat sanitizing the stir bar as well as the entire flask. And then the other thing you probably want to do is put some uh, aluminium foil over the top. So when you're boiling, you're just sterilizing everything, including this surface where obviously the yeast slurry is going to run over when you pour that into your fermenter. So you, you wanna make sure you've got some aluminum foil which covers the uh, entire, entire top of the flask there. Um, yeah, probably about the only tricky thing is, is getting the stir bar uh, stuck on the magnet. We use some fairly str strong magnets in this machine, but when you uh, do it, I find it sometimes a bit easier to start on the corner like this so you can actually see it. Obviously, if you've got a darkish wort, sometimes it's harder to see, So, but you can generally always see it on the corner. So just start with it on the corner like that, then gradually move the... Uh, the flask over. The other thing is it's got to be perfectly in the middle. If it's slightly off center like that, you can find the bar will get thrown off center and uh, it'll, it'll, it'll actually disconnect with the magnets. Um, so that's really important. So you just slide it so it's perfectly on center like that. Once you've done that, yeah, you just uh, switch the machine on, oh, already on actually, and then you twist uh, the variable speed control here. Now there's no need to go ridiculously fast. Um, probably something like that's fine. Um, all you're trying to do is actually get keep the yeast in suspension. So if, you, if, you, if you're stirring it like this, I mean, it's definitely powerful enough to get a real vortex going like that, but you just don't have to do that. It's not about um, getting those bubbles sucking down into this massive vortex. I don't know it kind of looks cool when you do that, but it really is completely unnecessary. All you need is to keep that yeast in suspension. So yeah, look, this is like way, way too fast. You gotta like, yeah, bring it right back like that. So anyway, um, that's how to use it. If you've got any questions, uh, flick us an email. Uh, if you wanna see all the new stuff we're coming up with, definitely uh, click on subscribe down the bottom uh, right-hand corner of the screen there. All right, thanks guys. Bye.